So I'm going to turn the um, the platform over to Eric Anderson, who um, is going to show how to build it right. Hey, Nancy, thank you. Um, yeah. Everyone, I uh, appreciate your time and attention today. My name is Eric Anderson. I'm an ICU nurse. And uh, Michelle, I, I certainly would have been one to uh, benefit from such a such a a hackathon event while I was in nursing school. So I appreciate you for the sake of your students doing that. Um, I want to get into what I've been working on over the last two years, but I uh, want to set the scene first a little bit. So 12 years ago, I get accepted into nursing school. I'm looking forward to what this uh, next portion of, uh, of education will be for me and, um, and getting to be a nurse and care for folks. And I'm introduced to the idea of BME, biomedical engineering. It absolutely blew my mind when I was told by a, a fellow student that there's an entire industry dedicated to making everything for healthcare, uh, from diagnostics to therapeutic tools to drug delivery devices. I had no idea. I was just because I was naive and hadn't ever been exposed, but I found that there are a lot of nurses that I've met through my career that weren't familiar with biomedical engineering. So just getting into nursing school, very excited to see this, but I know ultimately at some point I want to be able to contribute to the biomedical engineering industry with what I learned as a nurse. So start nursing school, I get permission to take some biomedical engineering courses, which means that as I'm going to class with my nursing students, I'm approaching not just how do I learn how to be a nurse, but I'm approaching the bedside with a lens of what are some problems that I might find that I'm now aware there's an entire industry designed and dedicated to solving. So I take that needs finding mission with me to clinicals and labs and to professional practice afterward. So I decided, yes, I'm gonna stay nurse. I wanna learn how to be a nurse, how to be confident and competent in my abilities. And at some point in the future, I'll, I'll see how I can move into the industry side. So a couple of years working in the ER and then move to ICU. About five years into my career, I decided that now might be an opportunity where I could start to look and see how I can integrate the things that I've learned into um, into the innovation uh, of advancing nursing. So I start cold calling some design companies or some manufacturing companies, trying to find a way as a nurse that I can get in, and I don't find a path that exists. It was a little bit uh, frustrating and demoralizing. So maybe I think to myself, self, there isn't a good way to get there as a nurse. Maybe you have to do another way. Maybe I thought maybe I'd go to sales for medical devices and work my way from the periphery to the development phase so I could finally then be able to contribute what I knew and saw as a nurse. So I start looking and as I'm scrolling through LinkedIn, trying to find maybe a way out of nursing to help nursing, I come across the Johnson & Johnson Nurse Innovation Fellowship advertisement. I open it up and in it, are all of the things, all of the steps and stages and key foundational learnings that I had been looking for and trying to piece together in vain myself. And it was one of the, the few moments in life where as I did submit my application, I knew I was going to have a, a, a true and great impact on the trajectory of the rest of my career. And oh, how true that is. Uh, the fellowship has been a, a fantastic experience. The introduction to a whole nother community of like-minded, innovative nurses that are challenging the status quo because they're also seeing the problems and they know there are better solutions out there. Uh, nurses that are asking why questions almost as much as I am. Absolutely wonderful to be a part of that. And the community they provided me, especially uh, over the last two years, um, we had our first child, I uh, started grad school and was working full-time in the ICU. And it was uh, incredible to have their support um, with, with a group that is so like-minded. So aside from the support of the fellowship, one of some of the other things that I've greatly appreciated was the, the, the dedicated leadership um, education and, and development from CCL, because we now are equipped in a manner that we would never have received as a bedside nurse to be the resources back in our institutions and how to lead the change and influence improvements because we've been taught how to do it through these last two years. Um, and one of the things that I that I really appreciated from the, the nurse approved side and more of the business components is 
specifically articulating the problem. How, do, how are you going to fix something if you can't articulate the problem? So over these two years, I'm, I'm challenging myself to identify what's wrong. And I realize what I'm doing every day at the bedside and what I see my colleagues on the floor doing, a lot of it feels like we're banging our heads against the wall. And yes, nursing is a challenging job, but to me, I noticed that a lot of the challenge was from the things we had or were given to do the job. And those things didn't work for us. I realized that if we have a tool that we have to use and it doesn't reduce our work, it's not a tool. It's another job. And nurses have been given dozens and dozens of other jobs that detract from their primary focus which is taking care of their patients. So instead of nursing a patient, I find myself nursing the chart, nursing the glucometer, nursing the IV pump or the bed that will not roll down the hall while I have a ventilated patient we're taking to CATS. We need to do something to make actual tools for our nurses so they can focus on taking care of their patients in an effective and efficient manner. So while the rest of the world also had a gap year due to COVID, we did also. Uh, so in that year, we were able to meet virtually, but not in person. And so I decided I wanted to take advantage of the time and went back to uh, master's to, to graduate school and got a master's in biomedical, edu- biomedical engineering. It's a early medical device program focusing on identifying user needs, doing ideation and prototyping, testing and verification. And I did an electric track on human factors, which is basically optimizing usability. One of the things that I found severely limiting my ability as a nurse to effectively care for my patients at the hospital. So I graduated earlier this year and now between my clinical career, the fellowship as foundational and this graduate degree, I can help to to translate between the clinical, the engineering and the design languages. So that if I'm involved in developing medical devices, my dream since uh, starting nursing school, um, now I can help make sure that all of us are on the same team. And as a medical device developer, there are two primary jobs. One, you need to build the right it. If you need a way to measure glucose, we do need to build a glucometer. But the second and the important one to me is to build it right. The fact that something checks the sugar isn't good enough. If you don't consider the ways that the, the people using it have to integrate that into their workflow and how they hold it, where they use it, how bright it is, you, you will miss so many opportunities to make it work for them as a useful tool. So my personal mission has become to develop products that complement the clinical workflow and not complicate it which has been the frustrating experience through the vast majority of my my career as a nurse. So recently I began working at the end of last year for a company called Cambridge Design Partnership. It's a uh, device con- or a design consultancy that works with all the major medical device companies, including J&J, and I'm trying very hard to get on some of those projects because I think it would be a great way to, to reciprocate the, um, the investment that they've made in this program. But I'm bringing to them as one of, if not their first clinical hire, an opportunity to translate that firsthand clinical experience to to their insights team with my understanding of the clinical landscape. And and I get to bring what I've been the advocate for my patient as a critical care nurse, I now get to be an advocate for the clinician as a device developer and keeping their needs at the forefront of the project's goal. I'm I'm very user centric and and I wanna make sure that the, the, whatever device it is, is designed to be used well. And working with our human factors team, I get to ensure that when we test the tools that we set the bar of usability and we can make sure that we're designing them accordingly. And all of this is with the stipulation that I continue to maintain clinical time. So I do two days a month. I continue to go back and work as an ICU nurse so that it keeps me in touch with the needs of the patient being cared for, the needs of the nurses and the other clinicians doing the caring and the trends or changes that are coming that will that will then inform the development process as we're working with our clients to come up with the next generation of medical devices. So 
there's a professional opportunity working for Cambridge Design Partnership and, and our clients making devices. But I've also had the opportunity to become involved with the volunteer opportunity that um, in, uh, beautifully aligns with the end of this fellowship. Um, American Nurses Association's Innovation Technology and Devices Committee, uh, as, as um, I'll be a, a member of starting this, this year, uh, and hope to be able to further the drive set forth here by Johnson & Johnson to grow and empower nurse innovation across the entire country, um, develop ways to engage nurses and empower them to believe that, yes, they can, and to hopefully make a pathway that I tried so hard to find but couldn't, uh, to bring in more of the folks that are doing the hard work day in, day out, day out without the right tools, doing it for the patient. I want to be able to help make it better for them too. So we'll, we'll close and open up for questions, but my question for you is who better to retool healthcare than nurse innovators? Thank you, Eric. That was a great presentation um, about your journey. And, and I would certainly have been side by side with you in the past couple of, t couple of years and um, know the angst that you often felt being a nurse at the bedside and not having a voice or not being recognized for your in inherent, I think, uh, design and fix it um, kind of skills. Um, and you've now left, you know, the bedside, not entirely, but um, I think we're all going to benefit from it. But there's lots of nurses that have these ideas and these experiences that would like to do more of it in their um, in their hospital systems or their healthcare systems, wherever they are. What advice do you have for them? Um, you know, because we want to try to keep the nurses, at, you know, at the bedside if we can. But how how would you see a model that would be acknowledging of that skill and recognition to move forward. Absolutely. Um, I know it's there are a couple of uh, hospitals across the country in the last few years that have kind of started to develop their own in-house innovation programs. Um, and perhaps that'll be something that we get to tackle um, with the, the technology and devices committee. Um, but for me, the difference of knowing of nurse innovation and and seeing the community has made all the difference. Um, I had no idea there were there were any other folks. Uh, I considered myself an oddball from the get go, but um, there there are other folks which made me less odd because they're also asking the same questions. And tapping into this community is is a it's a, a wonderful community because we all want the same goal, which is a better opportunity to care for our patients. Um, so making those connections in your system and in with other systems, if, if your system hasn't created an opportunity to do internal innovation, um, reach out to any of us, myself for sure, um, but like, like he and our presenter first this morning, their hospital has developed this. And I think we can all kind of take, take a, um, a, a follow along in those sorts of paths to, to try to engage with our own institutions and in similarly. You know, I, I have a, um, I'm going to make a leap here, um, and that is that if nurses were more engaged in their, on their, with it, at their jobs at the bedside with innovation and recognized and given the resources and support they needed, the tools to actually engage in that angle, that they'd be a lot more satisfied with their jobs. And what do you think about that? That, that is, when I think about the last two years and all the headlines about the stresses in the healthcare system, this is exactly the place where I feel like I might be able to contribute in some small way. Um, mm -hmm. the, the frustration, like nursing was not an, ever an easy job. And now having all these different systems that don't communicate, they require the nurse to have to be IT on top of being a nurse. And to me, I was frustrated at the end of every shift and if I had the right tools, I know not all the frustration, but a huge portion of it would be lessened because they're, it's such a noble job and I want to empower more of it because we all need the healthcare when we need the healthcare. 
and it saddens me that anyone would would want to leave i understand it but if we can give give the nurses the things that they need to maximize their nursing i can't think of any better contribution i could give any other way well well put um thank you there there is one other question um uh, that came forward, the relationship with devices and technology is critical. We need new workable solutions to help us all with the imbalance of patient need and the nurse workforce. Try to remember that non-hospital settings of care, uh, uh, settings of care too, um, linking to home is the future and engineering support is the only bridge for the, the future. Thank you, said the um, respondent. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, a number of the projects that uh, that we're working on right now at CDP in, in are specifically oriented to a non-clinical setting and how we can maximize the the health delivery without um, without over overloading the patient as the uh, administrator of their own health and, and and moving the technology to support that out of a clinical setting is certainly something that we're working on. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate your thoughts and your experience, and I'm sure you're going to be an um, uh, idol among young nurses as they move forward. Hopefully, we can get situations in hospitals and health systems where we can nurture innovation um, as, as a job satisfaction tool. So thank you. Mm -hmm.